Hello, and welcome to Dialogue Training. This is the first of eight sessions that are designed to teach you how to use the new CDOT ticket tracking, ticket tracking system that we call Dialogue. So let's take a look at what these sessions are. This first session is going to focus on logging in, basic navigation, and some of the terminology that you'll see as you begin using Dialogue. Then we'll have uh, seven more sessions. One will focus uh, on finding, accepting, and creating cases. Uh, the third one will be answering customers and attaching articles, uh, um, sending them through email. The fourth one will be capturing case notes and closing cases. Fifth will be how to transfer cases to another CSR or subject matter export. The sixth recorded session will be all about sharing cases and referencing others in case notes. And the seventh session will be working with contacts, how to find them, how to make changes to them. And then finally, we'll wrap up with how to log a call on a major event. Most of these sessions will really be quite short. This one's probably one of the longer ones because we have some ground or foundational concepts to go through before you start working within Dialog. But let's get started. So I want to talk a little bit about Salesforce.com because Salesforce is the um, platform upon which Dialog is built. So at CDOT, we actually use Salesforce for a whole lot of different purposes. So for example, we use it to um, manage RFPs in certain areas. We have um, some Salesforce.com solutions uh, for managing certain parts of our airport relationships. And now we are introducing Dialog, a Salesforce.com solution, which is a ticket tracking application for our new customer service organization. So why this is important to you is that when you go into Salesforce, when we log in, you're going to see salesforce.com. We're going to log in from www.salesforce.com. And when you get a new password or a password reset, um, those emails are gonna come from an email address called support at salesforce.com. So I just wanted to let you know that if you see those words, you're in the right place, though we are going to be referred to it as dialogue here at CDOT and customer service. So let's also talk about what's in it for us. So as a CDOT organization, we have decided to build, uh, uh, expand our customer service roles so that we have customer service representatives in each of our regions, and sometimes we have more than one. We believe that this organization will allow us to provide better service coverage throughout the entire state. Dialog is a system that's going to support those efforts, and Dialog is going to help us collaborate between headquarters and all of the different regions, and it'll also help us to collaborate between regions when that's necessary. Dialog has an ability for us to uh, capture information in the form of an article. We, we refer to these as orange pages, but you'll also see them referred to in Salesforce as knowledge. And that ability um, within Dialog is going to allow you to answer more efficiently to customers or uh, answer customers more efficiently because those responses are going to be right within Dialog and will be suggested to you. So you can search for an answer and it will be right at your fingertips to be able to provide to your customer. And last but certainly not least, we believe that we're going to uh, be able to capture some data that we just really have never had before. So as we are starting to track or create tickets or cases within Dialog for all of those inquiries or questions that we get from our customers when they call us, um, we're going to capture those and it's going to give us an idea. What kind of questions are we fielding? What, in what regions are they coming from? Do we have the right resources in place? What can we do to proactively anticipate these and help uh, to inform the public better? So this is just, these are just data points that we just previously haven't had before and we believe that Dialog is going to provide us with some good eye-opening information that's going to help us um, improve ourselves as a CDOT organization and as a customer service organization. So with that, let's move forward and start talking about Dialog. So along with this training session and this series of recording sessions, there's also a packet of job aids that have step-by-step -step procedures. There's 16 pages in this job aid, and there's a page per um, major task that you'll need to be able to perform within Dialog. So you can see here on screen, there's logging in, there's finding and accepting cases, there's creating new cases. So if you do have that, uh, printed document on hand, you can go ahead and as we go through this recording, you can even flip to those pages. So I'll refer to them as we continue on through the recording. 
So when you first log into Dialog, you will get an email in your email inbox, and it will be from support at salesforce.com. You can see a little snippet, I don't know how well, in the screenshot that you see here. You'll find the email from Salesforce, and you'll click this big, long blue link. So there's a couple of them. One is your username, and then right below, there's a long link that will prompt you to go into Salesforce. Um, and it will, it will identify your username there, but then it will ask you to uh, establish a password. It will then ask you to retype that password. Then you'll choose a security question and you'll type the answer to the security question. And then once you've completed those tasks, Salesforce will take you into Dialog. And so when you go into Dialog, it is going to look something like, let me see if I can find it here, this. You might not have any cases in there yet because you haven't been working within Dialog, but you'll have Dialog in the upper left-hand corner. Most of you will have cases shown right here. A few of you, if you're using um, Dialog for multiple purposes, you may see that you have a little thing, a little uh, drop-down list over in the upper right-hand corner that says uh, that should say console if you have it. Some of you will only have this one application, so you won't even be offered a drop-down list. But this is your first glimpse into Dialog. Then when you come back the next time, and this is going to be on page two of your materials, you're going to just go straight to www.salesforce.com. You'll click the Login button in the upper right-hand corner. You can make that page a bookmark if you want so that it's easy for you to go there. And then you can enter the username and the password that you just established. It's also important to note that if you forget your password, you can help yourself. So Salesforce, much like, I don't know, internet banking applications or Amazon.com applications, those allow you to, you know, kind of self-serve yourself when you forget your password. So you just click the link and it it asks you for your username, which is is your um, is dialog dot your email address at c dot. And then from there, uh, it'll send you an email with another link to log in, and it will ask you to reestablish a password. So um, that's the way that Salesforce is going to do that. Let me just show you that quickly. So when you go to into Salesforce, you'll go first. You'll start with www.salesforce.com, and let's go here. Whoops, that doesn't work. Okay. And up here in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see that there is a login option. So here we are. I'm going to click that. And now you'll see that this is really login.salesforce.com. For those of you who feel more comfortable, you can just go straight there as well. And then you can mark this right here with this yellow as a bookmark. And then you'll have it in your bookmarks as well. And so you can always go back there. Then um, once you, I have a variety of different usernames here, but once you guys get there, it'll look a little bit like this. And note that I have a username here, dialog. I put Gina Talmadge's uh, email address in here, but dialog. state.co.us. You'll have your own email address after the dialog. Dot, but that's going to be your username, and then the password that you established. And then you'll choose uh, log into Salesforce. A couple little buttons down here. I do recommend that you check the remember username box because that way you won't have to continue to type dialog dot your email address every single time you log into Salesforce. So um, be sure to do that. And then also remember how I told you that when you forget your password, you can simply click this forget your password link and then Salesforce will send you from support at salesforce.com another email address that will look something like this again. And then you'll just click in there and it will prompt you to reset your password. And just as before, you will come back into Dialog and be ready to roll. So one other point that I wanted to make about uh, logging into Salesforce, some of you might have two offices that you support or you may need to go to and log into more than one machine. Uh, maybe one office uses a desktop and then you might use a left laptop in another office or maybe you just have two different computers when you go between offices. And um, so what will happen is the first time that you log into a new computer, so you've already logged into one computer and now you want to log into another computer, Salesforce is going to want to, we call it authenticate, whether or not it's you. 
So they will do this by sending you an activation code. So when you first start logging into a new computer, you'll get a little screen that says, oh, hey, this looks like it might be a new computer. So just let us know if this is you by entering in an activation code. And uh, there will Salesforce will send you again from support at salesforce.com an email that contains, I think it's like a five digit code. And then you'll type the five digit code in and it will take you into Salesforce once again. So that is pretty much all we can talk about when it comes to logging into Salesforce. So let me go back to where we were and let's continue forward. So now I'm going to uh, give you just a quick tour of the console and dialogue. And this is really when you come in in the morning, you're going to be looking at the console. You'll be looking at different, we call them list views, but basically they're queues. So for example, there might be a queue, let's say you're in region four. You might go into the region four queue and see what kinds of cases may have come in. So there are a variety of different places where cases will be coming into dialogue. Right now, if a customer sends an email, the email will come into dialogue. Um, if a phone call comes in, you will be in dialogue creating new cases. But ultimately, we have a new contact us page that it will be going live on the dialogue website, or at, excuse me, on the CDOT website, so that if one of our customers calls in, they can click contact us, and this page will help them determine how to reach us, and they will create their own cases. That contact us page will also be available as a mobile application. So. Um, other also other avenues for people to create cases would be to submit a case through Facebook. So CDOT has a variety of different um, ways that our customers can communicate with us. And when they when customers self create their cases, either through email or uh, through the contact us page, those cases will end up being routed to a specific queue um, based on the region that they specified. So if I was a region four CSR, I might start my morning off by looking at the queue and seeing if there are any cases in there. And if there are cases in the queue, then I'm going to accept those cases into my own, um, my own case folder or list view and begin working to them from, on them from there. So let's take a look at some of those concepts. So here I am in dialogue and I'm gonna start here up at the top uh, so right to, just to the right of the words dialog, there's a search box. So searching you might use to find like if you had keywords for uh, maybe subject matter of a case. Maybe you have a specific case number that somebody has provided to you and said, hey, Trisha, why don't you look up case number 2054? And then you could just type in the case number and search for it and then it would pull it up. Um, sometimes you might have people who are calling in and they give you their uh, full name and, and email address and information. And so you might wanna look up to see if they're an already existing customer and look at their contact record and maybe some of their case history. And then um, I think most of the time, however, you're going to start in this case view. So I, I want to just highlight a couple of different options that you have. While I believe that this mostly defaults to cases, if it doesn't, notice that there's this drop down arrow just to the right of the word cases and kind of underneath that search box. When you click that, you'll see that you have several options. Not sure if you guys will have all of the options that I have here as a, because I'm logged in to, as a console administrator, but you will um, definitely have cases. You'll have chatter, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, you may have the ability to work with accounts, which we um, aren't gonna talk about that much because uh, we will do more of that when we introduce the, whoops, when we introduce uh, dialogue for contractors, they will also be, coming onto contractors soon, or onto dialogue soon. And then the other one is contacts. So you may be looking at contacts. However, my guess is you'll probably be searching for contacts in different ways. But just know that this is another tabular way of getting into the different types of records in uh, dialogue. Also, when the contractors come on board, we'll start seeing more projects, and this will be a way for you to view active projects within the state. Now let's stick with cases. When I have selected the cases tab, and if you ever get lost or confused and can't remember where you are, feel free to just click on the cases tab. Um, you'll end up with another box, another little drop down list, and this one is your list of list views. Um, now, I think for most CSRs, you will have about eight different list views, uh, but let me just kind of hit the high points here. 
Notice down here we've got our regional cues. So here's region one, region two, region three, region four, and region five cues. We also have cues for subject matter experts, which as we bring on subject matter experts, this may be where they look for their work. Um, all closed cases, so any cases that um, have been completed, all open cases, these are any cases that are open that you either own or that someone has shared with you. Um, we have a case queue for Cora. Uh, we have a case queue for HQ and HR. We have a queue for major events. So sometimes over the course of the year we'll have, maybe it will be a, I don't know, a parade route or a sporting event or a um, blizzard with really horrible road conditions or a flood or a rock slide or something um, of that nature where we're just getting a barrage of phone calls and we want to make sure that we address those phone calls appropriately, but we don't need to go through um, creating multiple cases for the same major event. So what we'll have you do is just log a call against a major event and we'll show you that in section eight. And then we have my closed cases. So those are closed cases that you would see if um, you had already finished them and marked them as closed. And then you have my open cases. The two that I think you will be in most frequently will be um, my open cases, because that's where you can go see the cases that you've accepted and so therefore you have claimed ownership of um, that are still outstanding that you haven't completed. And then you'll also be going into your queue. So in our region four CSR, you would go into the region four queue and you would check it out. We can check it out and see that it's pretty clear this morning, not a whole lot of cases going on there. Um, but then we can look at my open cases and I can see that I have three cases outstanding. All right, so let's see. Now that I'm, I've clicked a, a list view and I've got some cases in it, I want to move down just one more level and look at the different buttons that we have available. The two that you're going to be using most frequently will be accept case. So uh, you may wish to accept a case from McHugh. Uh, which means that you're claiming it. When you claim or accept a queue or a case from a queue, it is removed from the queue and then it moves into my open cases. Uh, when you begin to uh, get phone calls, uh, you'll create new CS cases. So the phone call comes in, you'll click new CS case, you'll create a case for it, um, and then you may enter the customer, you may add some case comments, you may collaborate with others on your team, and then you'll probably close your case. Uh, so there is your new CS, CS stands for customer service case. And then there are other two other types of cases that you may not be using quite as frequently. A new major event is when, like I mentioned, we have something like a blizzard or a rock slide or a parade road or some, something, um, some sort of significant event that we need to be managing traffic for or, um, or that is impacting our highways and byways. Uh, th that new major event will be created centrally. So probably people who are communications managers or customer service managers will create those major events se separately, and then you can look at major events in your major events queue. And right now, um, we don't have any major events in our major events queue, but we will have by the time we get to that recorded session. Uh, new project cases will be project cases based on um, uh, entry by or for a contractor. So we'll talk more about those when our contractors get on board. Okay then, let's keep going forward and talk about my open cases. So now that we're looking at the list, notice that there are a couple of things here. You can check boxes and choose accept case, or just to display a case, you can simply click either the case number or the subject. Doesn't matter, you can go either way here. If you click the contact name, that will take you to the contact record, which we're going to talk about later. And if you were to click on the name of the case owner, it would take you to a user record, which is a different kind of record in dialog. If you were to do that inadvertently and get stuck and have no idea where you were going, you would be able to click on the case again. Um, sometimes if you get into an odd place, you have the ability to click something up here that says, return to console and so you can click return to console and then just go back to your cases in your familiar spot and choose the um, list view that's most appropriate for you. So let's go ahead and click on one. I have one here that is a severely compromised guardrail. So when I click on this 
case, you can see that I have a subject matter, my guard guardrail, which is severely compromised. You'll see some details about it. In this case, it said highway just before Grand Lake. As I scroll down, you'll see that I have some case details. The contact name, I used myself as a contact name for this, um, for this demo. And does this person need a response? Yes, it's a medium priority. Here's the contact email and phone number information. Case description down here, what's the date of the occurrence? What kind of category would we call this? Um, how did it come in it came over the phone? Here's the subject. Here are the issue details. And then I have all sorts of other places where I can put in information about the case. The rule of thumb here is when you're creating a new case, you want to create at least the required field that is much information that is going to be helpful to anybody who might need to help you resolve the case. But you don't have to fill in every field if they're not relevant. As you continue to scroll down the case, you'll be able to look at a history of case comments and activity history and email and attachments and any kind of related cases and any articles that you might have attached to the case. And so sometimes you'll have cases that kind of hang out there for a while and you end up building quite a bit of history. But a quick place to look at some of the things that have been done are scrolling down to the bottom of the case. You'll also notice that at the top of the case there are several um, action tabs. So this is where we can view the case itself, but if I want to send an email to a customer, I can click the Answer Customer tab. I can write, the case, write a case note if I just want to jot down a note for one of my other um, colleagues to view. And then finally, I have the Log a Call tab, which we'll take a little bit more closer look at when we explore major events. So let's go back to the case details for now. Notice here up at the top that as I display a case, I have a little tab with a case and a case number, and I have a little X. So if I wanted to get rid of this case, I could just click the X and it would close the case. Sometimes you, ha want, you have more than one case happening at once, and so maybe now I want to open both of these because maybe I'm working on both of them at the same time. So notice that as I open up new cases, I have my old case open, and now I've just opened a second case over here. This one is for an oversized load driver. Um, and that is a two, uh, you know, a separate case number. And so I can click back and forth between these two cases. And you'll also note over time that as you start displaying other records like contacts, sometimes your tabs up here can get a little busy. So if you are looking at way too many tabs and not sure why you have them all open, it's okay. You can just close them and then you can always go find them again back in the list view that you started with. In this case, it was in my open cases. So I'm gonna close those cases. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you before we move on to something else is that you can move these little columns around. So if you'd like to have your status over here, your contact name, maybe your priority, let's see, we'll put priority over here, and you wanted to just kind of rearrange your columns so that they're in the order that you prefer, you can drag and drop, and then you can also sort your columns by priority. When you're in your queue, you might want to look at a sorting by the date because there's a date and time stamp, and that helps you to identify, you know, what was the one that came in earliest. So you're you're working uh, kind of first come first serve sort of way. So just know that you can sort your sort and, and rearrange your columns here uh, within your case list view. And I think that's what we wanted to go forward or, or to cover today. So let's just take a quick look, make sure we covered everything. We talked about the, the CS console. We talked about switching back and forth from cases to chatter to contacts and back again. We talked about your drop down options. Oh, there we go. Um, and your case list views. And we took a deep dive into my open cases, but we also talked about queues and accepting cases. So let's wrap up this section with quick terminology. So a case is a record that contains a detailed description of customer's feedback. Um, so these are problems, questions, queries, maybe they're complaints, maybe they're compliments. Uh, but this is really just a record in dialog that we use to track all of this type of information. So um, we might, might be road conditions, it might be a closure, it might be somebody saw an animal on the road that they thought needed to be cleaned up. Um, somebody might have reported 
blizzard or icy conditions that are requiring prompt attention from a CDOT truck. Uh, so there are all sorts of different types of inquiries that we get, and when they come in, we'll just create a case to capture that. Case management is really the process of managing those cases from entering them or having them be entered by the customer, accepting them, uh, getting the right people involved in resolving the case, answering the customer, and then resolving the case. A contact record is a different kind of record in Dialog. That one has, a, um, has fields to capture information about an individual. So you'll have like a first name and a last name. You might have a phone number, an email address, or a mailing address. So those are typical types of fields that we might fill in for a contact record. Contact is a different type of record, but it is associated to the case because there's usually an individual who calls in. So we like to capture their information as well. So we'll talk a little bit about how you do that in the next section. A CSR, uh, that is the customer service representative. And so that is probably you or someone um, who is one of your colleagues. Uh, customer service representatives reside both at headquarters and throughout the region. And their job is to facilitate the case management of a customer's inquiry. So when a customer's inquiry comes in, they will create the case within Dialog and be able to manage that throughout. Subject matter expert is an expert in the region who can assist in resolving the case. So if I have a traffic problem or if I have a maintenance problem, um, I might have a me that can help me out there. A queue, once again, is really, it's a drop-down list within uh, Dialog. And in Dialog, there, will, there is a queue which can own cases. So every case has an owner designated, and a case can be owned either by a queue, such as the Region 4 queue that we were looking at earlier, or by a person. So when we accepted that, queue, that case from the queue, um, then we became the owner of that. So a queue is really just a list of cases that have not yet been claimed to be worked. So um, there are queues for each of the regions, including headquarters here at CDOT. Major event is uh, not a single case. So a major event is generally when there's something major going on and it's generating a high call volume or a high volume of inquiries and questions or comments from customers uh, rather than create, you know, 100 different cases for those incoming calls, we'll create a major event. And as you take that call, you can simply log a call against it. That allows us to track the number of calls that we had related to a major event, but it does not um, um, anyway, it, it'll allow us to capture uh, or, or it'll allow us to report on all of those calls, but it, it doesn't require us to do a whole lot of extra work. And then last but not least is Chatter. And Chatter is uh, really Dialog's answer to a social media-like tool. So you'll see that when you're in there, you can collaborate using the at sign. You can identify topics using hashtags. You can create Chatter groups for certain topics. Um, you can follow different cases, uh, and you can collaborate with others on your team to let them know that you've shared cases with them. So we'll take a, um, an easy look into Chatter here shortly, but uh, you all will be able to collaborate with one another. I think a note about Chatter is we want to keep it, uh, definitely it's, it's business Chatter, so we want to make sure that the topics that you're discussing are relevant within Dialog. Okay, so I think we already went through finding and accepting cases. We talked about how you can select them from your upper left tab. We looked at the different use list views. We looked at the different buttons and the sort options. We talked about displaying cases and how to close cases. And we um, also, as we wrap up, I'll show you how to close and then we will move on to the next section. So uh, when you look into a case, you can either accept a case from a queue. So let's just say, I know that this is my open cases, but let's say that you were in your queue. You could either check a box here and click accept case. But more often, you'd like to look at the case first. So if you did want to look at a case, you could display it. And then you'll notice here that there's an accept case button right here. So after you've read through the, um, the case, you can click accept. If you get further into your case and maybe you're even answering your customer or writing a case note, notice that you can even accept cases over here. 
So there are a few different places that you can do that from your con for your convenience. My guess is most of you will probably just read through the case, look at the case information, and click accept if it's something that you choose to add to your own um, list of cases for which you're responsible. Okay, so um, just so you know, if you are in or watching these and you want to do try a couple of um, experiment with some things before you move on to the next one, I'll just leave this here so you can leave it on your screen for a while. Um, but I suggest that you go in, you navigate a little bit, practice logging in, display your cases tab, try some of those different list views, find your queue, try moving some columns around and sorting. Try looking at the all cases view or, or your list, your queue. Um, you can click on a case numbers or a subject in order to display cases. Uh, you can click, um, you know, open cases and close them so you can practice Xing out of them and cleaning up your case console, your desktop there. Um, you can locate that accept a case button and consider what, which one is probably more likely the kind that you'll use. Will you? accept it directly from the list or will you open the case first and view it and then choose accept a case and then you'll find it in your own my open cases list view and if there are no cases in there for you to accept not to worry we're going to move on in the next session and start to create a new one so the next one is how to work with cases how to find accept and create them and i will look forward to seeing you back there thank you